This is it. This is it. This is it. I'm there's a party over here. Say, I like the way you move. With Ryan Swain. Minster FM. So my second guest tonight has one of the most beautiful and powerful voices in British history. She stole the hearts of the nation by winning the 10th series of The X Factor in 2013 and since then has gone on to star in the West End and be a part of the hit musical Chicago and even go on her first headline tour back in 2015 which sold out venues and received rave reviews. She's released her album yesterday and it's great to have her here on the Minster FM Saturday night party show. It's Sam Bailey. Sam, how are you? Hello, how are you? Yes, I'm fantastic, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Um, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to come on your show. No, it's fine. Now, you've been very busy. Do you care to tell us what you've been up to over the last year? Oh, gosh. Um, well, obviously, I've been, like you said, I've been in the musical Chicago. Um, I've been um, writing my new album and um, writing songs. I've been over to LA and I've been working with some amazing people, the wonderful Ben Adams. Wow. Um, from A1 and I've been working with the wonderful Steve Dorf over in LA who wrote songs for Barbara Streisand, George Strait, Celine Dion, uh, to name but a few. He's literally an absolute legend. So I've I've been very, very lucky with the uh, people that I've been sort of working with the last couple of, um, couple of months. So, All the top um, yeah, songstresses, now, including yourself now, right? Yes, I'm, yes, I'm like... Um, I'm writing my own stuff, so you know, all, you know, the songs that are off the new album um, are pretty much, um, you know, written by me. There's like seven songs that were co-written by myself, um, songs that I just had the the title of the song for, and then we kind of worked around it because I said I wanted to write a song about this, and then we sort of went from my experiences and, and wrote about it. So I'm very proud of it. Very proud. Now, credibly to you, before winning the X Factor and all the glitz and the glamour, you were banging up people inside a prison and doing the rounds on the circuit of all the working men's clubs, being a singer. Um, and is that something that you've always aspired to be? or? Um, well, to, to be honest, I just wanted to be successful. And I think like any parent or any person out there, you just want to be able to provide for your family. And, and now I'm being able to do that. And, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm able to give my children something that, you know, they wouldn't have normally had in my normal life and my normal job. And I've kept my feet firmly on the ground. I've not moved from my, where I live. I've just got a nice, tidy little extension, which I'm very proud of. Very proud and, of. That's what we like to hear. Yeah, just normal. And I've Keeping it real. Huh? Keeping it real. Yeah, I'm, I'm constantly reminded of what I, you know, by looking in my house, I'm constantly reminded of how much hard work and graph has gone into it you know, my success and, you know, I don't want to be, you know, massively famous so I can't even go down the shops, you know, I, li- I like the fact that I can dip, dip in and out of it when I want, you know. Which fundamentally makes your soul a lot purer than some people's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no different to anyone else, there's something I could say to that but I won't say it live on air, but yeah, I'm no different than anybody else. When you won the X Factor back in 2013, you became like an overnight sensation and were given a ticket to media stardom, as I like to call it. Did you find that, like, bizarre to wake up and see yourself in all the papers and the magazines the next day? Um, yeah, I mean, I, there, was no, there was that many that I couldn't actually read it all. Cause so someone done me, like, a, a picture book and, and has glued it and stuck it on this. So I've got something to look forward to when I'm old and decrepit and sort of sit <laughs> <laughs> A recollection of Sam Bailey. Yeah, but you know when you look at when I look at you know how far I've come, you know I still can't go anywhere without being noticed, and I love that. You know, never bite the hand that feeds you. At the end of you know at the end of the day, and these people have voted for me, so I always stop and say hi to people. I've I've never turned anybody down for a photo. So if you do see me about, come and say hello. Oh, you like the Mother Teresa of the uh, musical world, Sam. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But that's what the fans adore and love about you, I guess. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like I say, like, the majority of my life is, is kind of, it's just been, you know, a massive whirlwind over the last couple of years, but I was determined not to let it change me, and and, uh, and people see me, I've just turned up in my 
close and, you know, I still live in a nice, tidy little close and there's just people around and they're just like, all right, Sam, how are you doing? So, like, people are shocked when they, yeah, say that I've not moved. And when they see me in, like, you know, shopping centres and stuff like that, everyone's like, oh, my gosh, she's actually shops on her own. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've got, you, you've got three wonderful children and I'm a father yeah. myself. And I do the rounds as well as a performer, so I know exactly how hard it is. And my fiancé does to her eternal credit as well, so I, I definitely know how difficult it is. And you're still a devoted mother whilst going on world tours and things, and you're definitely destined to do it. How do your kids find that, and how do you find it? Um, well, being away, I've always told my children that, you know, sometimes you have to make sacrifices in life. No matter what you're doing, you have to make sacrifices. Look at people that work in the army when they... They leave their families at home and they go off to fight for their country. These are sacrifices that people have to make every day. And, uh, you know, the sacrifice that I make for my family, you know, at the end of the day, when it's all done, when I go away for a couple of days or even a week or sometimes two weeks, and when I was in Chicago, I was away um, for six months and was pretty much home just on a Sunday. And when I was, when the kids were off school, they came to wherever I was and stayed with me for a week. Um, so these are sacrifices we have to make, but then... You know, the outcome of it is that I tell my children, you know, I do this so that I can earn good money so that we can have nice things and we can do nice things. I, I love I that about you, Sam. I, I, being a family man myself, I can completely relate to it. And I'm sure some of my listeners on my Saturday night party can as well, and their parents too. It, it's it's definitely a hard thing to do, being a parent in itself, let alone go on a tour singing and performing and constantly being in the public eye. FaceTime was my best friend when I did Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> we love FaceTime. And I guess it gives you a bit of a booster as well when you are on a long tour. And sometimes towards the end of a tour, it can get a bit tiresome and you get a booster from your family and it keeps you going, yeah? Yeah, it does. You know, when I get to see them, of like, you know, when I'm backstage getting my makeup done, ready for the show, I'd always FaceTime them. And Craig would just put the phone on the side in the kitchen and it was almost like I was in the kitchen with them. So they just walk around doing all their normal stuff. and. They could just see mummy in the kitchen on a phone, just like talking to them. What did you do today, Tom? Or, you know, how was school? And then talking to my, my daughter, Miley, and Brooke, you know, she'd be upstairs by that point. She don't really know. Like, <laughs> she been going on 16. So, um, but yeah, I would just sort of be a part of the family setup when I was getting ready. So it was almost like I was in the room without the cuddles. Oh, that's lovely. Now, your new album came out yesterday. It's fabulous, yeah. by the way. As a songwriter and a singer, do you feel that your album is different from others and it showcases your versatility as a performer? Um, yes, definitely, because on the album is a complete mixed bag of songs. My, my fans range from, from really young age all the way up to grandmas and granddads, so there's so many different songs on there. No one wants to listen to an album that's just very samey. I certainly don't. I like to listen to compilations so that when I'm driving in my car... I can listen to loads of different songs rather than listening to the same singer. But I do feel that every single song is different. It shows a different side of my voice for every single song. Every single song has a different meaning. And every single song has a different genre kind of attached to it. There's a, there's a 90s vibe song in there. There's, there's an Ibiza kind of dance track in there. There's like a rockette kind of song. There's an angry song. There's a, a, a song that's going to be played at my funeral um, so you're ticking all the boxes of life really things that people love people and 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 get sad about even you, you're touching every yeah. emotion yeah, so by the time someone's got got you know driven to asda they've been crying they've been laughing they've been partying there's a wedding song in there um that's you know like an ed sheeran kind of vibe wedding song called no tomorrow which is a beautiful song and loads of people have already said, like, before the album came out and they heard it, can they, can you sing that, can I have a copy of it so that I can play it at my wedding? And, you know, I'd love to go down the aisle to this song. And it's called No Tomorrow. It's one of the, my favourite songs to sing. In fact, I've just sang it at um, a, a, a do. So, um, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Now, you're going to be appearing and stopping off in York at the York Barbican on your UK tour in March. How can fans from around this region find tickets and more information about that? Um, if you want to find tickets, if you go on to um, sam-bailey.com, you can find tickets. You can also contact the Theatre Direct in their box office. Um, also, in York, I've chosen somebody to do my tour for York, and it's a wonderful little singer called Jessica May Frost. Ah, and right, she, yes, OK. She is going to be my support act for York. She's from...
from that area and um, she's an amazing little singer. I chose her in my competition because I'm doing a competition for every tour that I've, every venue I go to, um, people sending videos and it's just to give somebody that needs a little bit of a boost in the industry who I think is amazing to come and sing and support me on my tour and I've chosen um, little Jessica May Frost to be my um, support act on my tour. I think she'll, she'll be about nine or ten by the time um, by the time she does it but I think her voice is fantastic. She's very confident on stage and I think she's going to wow the audience. I think she's going to completely upstage me. Tell you that now. <laughs> and that's incredibly humble of you to give an opportunity to a younger generation to support such a big act like yourself on stage. Not many artists do that in, in the industry these days. Well, no, I just want someone that's great to be, you know, they're going to get a little bit of publicity out of it. It's going to be in the, new, in the newspapers and people can go along and support the artist. And you never know, there might be someone in the audience that it wants to book that person for their next gig. And, and people will remember that person for, for being at that night. Yes, they may well upstage me. It doesn't matter. I really don't mind. But, you know, I just want to give somebody an opportunity where there's not normally an opportunity like that coming up. So um, they may never got an, get another opportunity like this. And you never know, I might support, be supporting them in years to come. So. <laughs> Definitely. No, I, don't, I can't imagine you ever been a has-been, Sam. Definitely not. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you, babe. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Sam Bailey on 104.7 Minster FM. Minster FM.